Hey, Claude Pallon here, affiliate starting line. Welcome. This is going to be the continuation of the SEO Moz Beginner's Guide to SEO video series. We're in Chapter 4, Part 4. And uh, it starts off here with URL structures. Uniform resource locators, the web address for a particular document, are of great value from a search perspective. Yes, they are. And what they do here in this part of the chapter is show you that URLs appear in some main parts of the web, namely in the search results, in the address bar, and even in content. What do we mean by that? Let's take a look. So in the search results, you're going to see URLs appear right under the title of and the link of the search results. So here is uh, this URL. There's another one here. They're in green, and they're pretty easy to identify. And generally, they want you to be able to see those. And it, you should be able to tell from the URL what the site's about. The next place you find them is in the address bar. Here's the walking company, and there's the address bar with the URL for the for the website there. So address bar is place number two. Place number three, in content. This is the content of a blog, and right up here is a reference to a URL. So that's the third part where you can see URLs. So that's basically what that explains in this part of the chapter. The next part they want you to understand is that there are five different features to a URL that you should employ when you're designing or picking a URL for a site. A, employ empathy. They want to you to place yourself in the mind of the user and see if you can accurately predict when you look at a URL what that site is about, what that page is about you're about to go to. Shorter the better. The shorter the, the URL the better. Uh, that's not always possible. But you, at the very least, you want your URL to be descriptive of the material or the page or the copy that people are going to find. Keyword use. It's, if you can, make sure that the keywords that is the main keyword for that piece of content that's going to follow is in the URL. Uh, it's easier to do that with certain content management systems. But uh, you want to, like WordPress, and uh, if you can do it, do it. Uh, and I'll, we'll see what, that, what that's all about in a second. Go static. The best URLs are humanly readable without a lot of parameters and garbage in them. So they show you one here. It's, you know, here's a URL with blog uh, question mark ID equals one two three. Is, wouldn't it be a lot better if you just had keywords separated by hyphens? And those are what the last two features they talk about. So those are five different ways to look at designing a usable URL. Next piece of content talks about canonical and duplicate versions of content. So duplicate content uh, means that you have the same content on two different pages of, of a website or more. And that same content could be there for a valid reason. You may have a printable uh, user piece of a page, and then you have an HTML version of the page. But the, the point is that the, the material in that page is the same. Canonicalization, which is a a word happens when two or more duplicate versions of a web page appear on different URLs. So now you're getting the same content across several pages, but each one of those pages has a different URL. What can you do about it? Because the reason you don't want to do that is that it, in a sense, confuses the search engines and they penalize you for it. So you know, you could lose page rank or you drop in the rankings, etc. You really don't want to do that. So the way to avoid it, there's two methods. One is to use a 301 redirect, which is a fancy way of saying you can tell the search engine when it reaches a page, hey, this is the same content as I've got on another page, so I'm going to send you to that other page because that's the important page that you should pay attention to. And a 301 redirect does that. In this case, the 301 designates a redirection that is permanent. You always want that to happen. So that's one way. The second way is by using a canonical URL tag. This achieves exactly the same end, it, 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 but it does it by using a piece of code and putting it into your HTML page. Uh, and that usually comes in the form, in the case of WordPress, of a plugin. In this particular case, we have a, a content on this website. And down here, I can uh, come down here and see, I can see I have a space for a canonical URL or 301 redirect in which I can put the, the web address of whatever the main page is that I want to send the search engine to because the content on this page is duplicate. So here is, a, a, uh, here is an actual demonstration of the two different methods you can use to, do, uh, to avoid the duplicate content situation. And that is what this part of the chapter explains. 
They show you down here the, the link structure that you would use if you wanted to type it in yourself in HTML. So that's a link rel equals with canonical in quotes, and then there's an href equals, and then in quotes is the H as the blog uh, URL of the main, there's a URL you want to send the search engine to as the main repository of that information. Rich snippets. This is another concept that, uh, that you should know about. It's, it, it's, um, it's a little bit down the line in sophistication. You really don't have to worry about this if you're really starting, just starting out, but you should know about it and then somewhere down the line you'll want to pay attention to it. This is another way, uh, a, a rich snippet is just a piece of information that describes your site, but it's put in a certain type of code that designates it for the search engine as more important than your metadata description. And so the search engine will pull that up and use that to describe your website in the search results. That's really it. On the right hand side, it shows you the code that you would use instead of the normal HTML code. And, <clears throat> and what it does, it's also designed for certain types of information. So to show you a rich snippet right here, this is a rich snippet. It's a review of a restaurant and the content here that you're gonna see is gonna be different than what they have in their meta tag description, but it's more relevant to what you're gonna get when you click on the page. So it adds relevance and by doing that, it adds your odds of, of ranking for that information. Uh, there's a place in the Google thing that explains what rich snippets are about, and it's rich snippets pertain to certain types of information. In this case, reviews, people, products, businesses and organizations, recipes, events, and music. So if, if your information falls into any one of those categories, then there is code, rich snippet code that you can use to make the search results more relevant uh, and uh, you stand a better chance of, of ranking. And then the last part of the chapter is defending your site's honor. Is This is all about people who scrape content. Someone scrapes, takes content off your website and tries to use it on theirs. You want a way uh, to protect yourself uh, so that you, you get recognized as the author. And, and the way that you want to do that is by using pinging. In this case, they recommend a program called Pingomatic. And what that does is, is when you put content on your website, it it sends notifications to Yahoo, Bing, Google, Technorati, major sites that you've just created content. They're going to be aware that you created that content. You'll get it indexed first, etc. And so when somebody takes it, uh, they can't really try to pass it off as their own. They show you here some code that you can use in order to make sure that uh, when people click on links in that content, it comes back to your website and uh, so that that will confirm that it's your content and nobody else's. So, and then it goes down here and, and gives you a link so that you can understand how you can enforce your copyright and what to do if somebody steals your information. So this part of the, this, this is the end of uh, chapter four of the SEO Moz Beginner's Guide to SEO. I hope this video has been helpful. These are very important concepts. You wanna spend some time um, going through them and getting a good handle on them because it'll help you succeed online. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful. This is Claude Flan Affiliate Starting Line. Stay with it, stay well, and we'll talk to you soon.